particularly. Thank yeah. you so much, Chairman. Chairman, uh, first of all, let me thank you for the invitation for us to appear before you and also to uh, respond to your call that, like you rightly mentioned, after the Ghana disappointing exit from the AFCON 2023, I came to this August House and I made a statement on our government rule, the rule government played in ensuring that we get our national team represent our country in the, in the African uh, biggest football tournament, which is the AFCON. The statement captured everything that we did before, during, and what we did, we needed to do after the uh, tournament. And also again, uh, the petition that the fixed Ghana football uh, pressure group also submitted to parliament. The ministry was in copy. A uh, copy was sent to the ministry as well. So we want to thank them uh, for also uh, for the love for the game that we all love. Uh, if we are not getting the results that we are all yearning for, it is important that uh, we raise our concern so that we can uh, we can all improve on the performance of our national team. But Mr. Uh, Chairman, if you don't mind, I want to go by some of the points that they've captured in their petition. If uh, that would be fine. Uh, first of all, on the national policy on football, just to draw your attention that the ministry have engaged all stakeholders, including the media, on making sure that we have a sports policy. And I believe it's unfortunate that the, uh, the fixed uh, Ghana football have left, but most of them were at the stakeholders conference where we called all stakeholders in Ghana to work towards having a, a sports policy which include football. And that sports policy, as we have said, have been uh, transferred to the National Development Planning Commission. They have made their input after all the stakeholders' engagement. They have made their input is at the final stage of it being launched. So in their grievances of the lack of football policy, once the policy is adored, most of the issues that uh, need to be addressed will be captured in the policy. Aside that, we are all aware that we have a National Sports Act, the National Sports Authority Act that was established in 19, uh, 2016. And with your support, we have worked around the clock to get the, the ally, the legislative instrument, also put in place. Now the legislative instruments have been passed. And this instrument will also help in making sure that we improve on our uh, policies and making sure that we regulate the sector very well and bring in dividends and improvement in the sector. Mr. Chairman, when it comes to national team management, the ministry rule, as we all know, is making sure that we provide the logistics for our national teams. We all know that we have and uh, that we have various national teams for both female and male. We have under 17 uh, national teams for our country. We have under 20 national team for both male and female. We have under 23 national team for both male and female. And we have the senior national team, what we call, we all know as the Black Stars and the Black Queens as well. And in all all these national teams engage in continental and global competitions when it comes to qualification. So <coughs> in response to the petitioners' uh, concern of we not having uh, salaries for coaches, there are like honorable members of parliament inquired from the petitioners, 
there are terms of references that the FA will normally will go into in engaging a coach, whether it is the junior, juvenile stage, that's under 17, or under 20, or under 23, or the senior national team. There are always terms and reference, and, and, and terms and conditions. So, and whether it is also male or female, these are all the conditions are captured. So normally the FA will engage and have contracts with all these national team coaches. They have contracts and the terms are spelled out. So if your terms of condition in your contract says that uh, we are going to engage you, but your, the benefit that you will get is when the senior national team is competing. So because of based on performance, you should be able to qualify it. When you are qualifying for continental stage, you get bonuses, and you, the coach, will get double of what the player takes. Then also, when you also qualify for the tournament and you are going for the main tournament, the bonuses that you are going to get, you, the coach, will get double of what the players will get. Then also, after that, if there is any uh, trophy that you are going to win, you, the coach, will get some component of amount, these are performance-based contracts that they normally sign. It doesn't necessarily mean that every coach should be based on monthly salary. So these contracts are always signed, and when I listened to them, they said they have not been paid. We, almost all our coaches, whether it is the national team coach, or it is, uh, that is the senior national team coach, or the, uh, the, the, the juvenile side from the, those I've mentioned. Once they go into this tournament, and whatever, whatever is due them, they are, they are paid. They are paid. So if you signed to this contract, and later on you come and say you don't get monthly salary, just because maybe the senior national team uh, coach gets monthly salary, I don't think that it is fair, because before you even pen your signature, you know the terms and conditions of what you are penning your signature to. So that is what I want to bring the clarity. Mr. Chairman, the other issue I want to mention has to do with funding. Funding is a major and the most critical uh, thing when it comes to our national team management and also even sports development. And because of that, my predecessor submitted a sports fund uh, cabinet proposal to cabinet and we needed to get some component from the National Youth Authority share of the District Assembly Common Fund. But cabinet in its wisdom thought that there will be implications on the youth uh, activities once we take the proposed 50 percent from the District Assembly Common Fund allocation to, uh, to use it to establish the sports fund. So cabinet asked the ministry to do an implication an impact analy analysis for cabinet. And Mr. Chairman, that impact analysis was done and we realized that there will be a huge impact if we should go that route. So the ministry have now engaged all st key stakeholders and we have put in, we have put together uh, a sports fund uh, cabinet proposal which uh, we think that it, it is very feasible because we have also seen other countries like Morocco where they use lotteries, uh, the sports lotteries, in raising funds and also getting some shares from uh, the betting revenues that comes in, in raising funds to support their national teams. And we are using similar route and that proposal, that cabinet proposal has been finalized and it is, it is on its way to cabinet for cabinet approval. And once that is done, the, uh, it will also come to parliament for parliament to also uh, pass it. Mr. Chairman, the other thing I want to, we agree with the petitioners that to be able to have a very robust uh, sports economy, then we have to uh, put our attention to the grassroots sports development. <clears throat> and that is why this government 
have invested heavily in sports infrastructure at the grassroots level. Because before the assumption of His Excellency, <coughs> the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudanko Ekufuadu, we had only one, only, only three AstroTurf or sports, community sports facilities in the, in, the, in, in the entire country. As we speak today, Mr. Chairman, we have constructed more than 160 AstroTurfs in various districts in Ghana. Aside that, we have also constructed uh, simultaneously uh, the 10 youth resource centers. Six of them, which one of them has been commissioned, which is Kufodia. While, as we speak, is ready for commissioning. Dunka Ofen is also almost ready for commissioning. Azim, in the western region, is also almost ready for commissioning. We have uh, outstanding Domahin crew also the phase two is almost done. We still have challenges to do with funding to be able to complete the rest of the four. Because Mr. Chairman, you know that the funding source for these 10 youth resource, uh, <coughs> youth resource centers, which comes with stadium facilities, like 5,000 seater facilities, FIFA standard pitch, uh, tracks, athletics tracks, youth resource centers, entrepreneurial centers, ICT center, and also basketball, volleyball centers, tennis courts, all these facilities, the 10 that I've mentioned, all capture them. And an ICT center, Mr. Mr. Chairman, this, all this huge investment in sports is to make sure that when you get back to the grassroots, at least there are facilities, <coughs> sorry, there are facilities there for you to be able to use to develop more talents so that we can have the best of talents into our national teams. Notwithstanding that, Mr. Chairman, we also use the opportunity for hosting the entire Africa for the African Games in investing, investing very hugely in our sports infrastructure. Mr. Chairman, the, the University of Ghana Sports Stadium, where, which was the main venue for the African Games, has been completed with an improved seating capacity and with a FIFA standard pitch. Currently, as we speak, almost four clubs are using it as their venue for their, the premiership, the current, the current premiership, the current, current ongoing premiership. We also have a warm-up track, which is just a training pitch, which is just about five meters away from the main bowl. We have athletic tracks, which is certified by the world athletics body. So the timing that you do on these tracks are recognized globally. And as you speak, we have children, young, young children, if you go there every weekend, using this track to develop their talents. So we all agree that once these facilities are put together, the impact, long-term, medium to long-term impact on, into our national team is going to be very, very huge. We are going to have more and more talent developed and most of these talents, once they are harnessed, are going to project our country and compete and compete and win laurels for our country. So going back to the grassroots sports development, after putting all this infrastructure, the focus of government is now shifted from sports promotion to sports development. And what do I mean by sports development? The sports development here means we have a community sports competition, that the district level sports competition, then we are able to get to the regional level and to the national level. So we are going to, we have instituted what we call the national games, starting from the district level competitions because of these facilities there. And I'm also engaging with the Minister for Youth, uh, Minister of Education and the Ghana Education Service for School Sports as well. And the school, school, school sports secretariat uh, a federation is going to be established. We are establishing a school sports federation, which will focus on making sure that the inter-schools that we have, 
we have currently. We improve upon it. We improve on the inter-school sports that we have so that we can develop more talent in the schools. Luckily for us, now we have free SHS. So everybody is moving, uh, have opportunity to be in school. And we can then identify this talent, train them and groom them very well in the schools. Then once they move there, His Excellency the President intend to convert the current Botima Sports Complex to a university for sports for development. A university for sports for development and for the information of members. Cabinet has approved, we have gotten executive approval from Cabinet and very soon the draft bill for the establishment of the uh, the University for Sports for Development, which is currently at the Attorney General, will be, lead, will be lead and it will be referred to this committee to look into it for us to establish the university. Aside that, the Winneba Sports College is also being revamped, making sure that we get partners to support them. They've done their scheme of service which is currently uh, with the Ministry, the Public Service Commission, the Public Service Commission, the scheme of service. So we are revamping the Winneba Sports College. And they are doing a various training for, ten camp of, for officials, not only even in Winneba, but they now move away from Winneba to Kumasi and Tamale. So do the, the, the northern zone in Tamale, the middle bed zone, in Kumasi, in Kumasi, then the Southern Belt Zone, they do it in Winneba itself, the college itself. So these are the technical training centers that government intend to put, making sure that we develop school sports and the identify talent for these colleges and training, technical te training centers in, in, in the country. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the call for tax reduction for sporting events, it's a good call. It's a good call. The biggest challenge we, fa we, we have for funding our sports, you know globally, uh, beverage uh, companies invest a lot in sports development. When you take the, uh, the premiership in UK, for example, you see a lot of alcoholic beverages companies sponsoring the league. But in Ghana, unfortunately for us, the law that we passed in establishing the Food and Drugs uh, Authority, there is a clause there that fringe on any alcoholic beverages in supporting or sponsoring any sporting activity. And the key sports stakeholders like the FA, the Galka, and other federations have raised these issues. So, yet, our populace, Ghanaian populace, we consume most of these foreign uh, sporting events here in Ghana. So the premiership, you have everybody in Ghana watching the premiership in any way. Yet, in your own country, you, we are banning that no, they shouldn't sponsor. So it becomes very difficult when you write to, for example, Guinness Ghana, which in the past was sponsoring our senior national teams and making sure that they invest a lot in sports development. But now they can't do so because of our own laws that we have passed, because of the law, the, the food, and, food and Drugs Authority law that we have passed. And Mr. Chairman, maybe once we finish, I will uh, refer you to the specific clause so that together we have raised this concern to Mr. Speaker. When we did the Democracy Cup, the FA had the opportunity of raising this content, consent, Mr. Speaker. So we can look at that as well, so that we can then create more opportunity for us to have uh, the sports fund and have more revenue in it. One thing in establishing the sports fund, and another thing is being able to do what? Get money, funds into it. So once that is done, we should be able to find ways of getting uh, revenue into it. Then I want to conclude, Mr. Chairman, but ref, uh, going back to the, our participation in the AFCON, like I mentioned earlier, 
the ministry role was to ensure that government raised the needed funds to ensure that once the technical team and the FA rise to the ministry, that their proposal is to camp the players here. These are the financial requirements. These are the logistics requirements. The ministry will make sure that all those requirements are met. And in this case, Mr. Chairman, everything that the FA and the technical team requested, whether it is for hotels and training venues for the team, we had the funds to do what? To pay. Whether flying all the players that were selected by the, by the, tanker, by the senior uh, tanker team, we fly all of them to the camp, the ministry got the funds, and we flew all, all of them to their, their base. We've chartered a flight here and took them to the, t the team to uh, Abidjan, Ivory Coast, uh, La Côte d'Ivoire, La Côte d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> and the facilities that they were supposed to stay there, all the logistics, the sports equipment, everything was provided. So on our part, as government, we ensure that everything that was needed to be done was done. Their per diems were paid both at the pre-tournament and at the tournament stage. One of the issues that bothers a lot of Ghanaians, like all of us, ordinary Ghanaians, which we are all concerned, has to do with hammer, the way we spend more attention to our blasters as compared to the other uh, teams. So you have, like I mentioned, you have the sta sta uh, satellites, you have the meteors, you have the uh, st starlets. Please yeah. mention the women too. The, the, the yeah. You have the sta uh, princess. The princesses, you just, <laughs> Colombia. <laughs> you have the princesses, you have the queens, and you have the uh, maidens, the black maidens, all of them. Any time that there is tournament, whether it is qualification for any tournament in the, in, in, on the African continent, or whether it is a qualification for any tournament globally. So when I say global, whether it's a World Cup or it is an African Cup of Nations, they first submit their budget. We sit down and agree with the budget. Where we have challenges, we indicate then we all agree. But once we agree, on the government side, we'll make sure that everything is provided. The black princesses, for example, recently uh, just exited the World Cup in Colombia. They were in camp in, the, in Pram Pram. The, the FA requested for us to, to be transferred so that they can be able to play competitions in Cape Coast we gave them the opportunity, government funded, and ensured that they were camped about three weeks or so. Three weeks or so in Cape Coast. In, then from there, they were brought back to Accra again. They were in Labadi for another one week before their departure to Colombia. When they were going, we made sure that everything that is needed in terms of their flights, to go, in terms of their per diem, to go, in terms of their outstanding bonuses, everything was paid for them. Everything. So, when it comes to, we don't discriminate at all when it comes to our national team. We don't. As government, we ensure that we provide equitable resources to all our national team, not even only football, to the other, uh, 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 other sport, uh, sport, uh, sporting discipline. For example, the Olympic Games that just ended. Ghana was represented. The government ensured that the team that went, the, 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 the needed resources that they needed for them to be able to camp 
and go for the competition. It was done. The para team, the same thing. So we don't discriminate at all when it comes to sport development. We ensure that because we know that God given talent is not it's not everybody that is endowed with football talent. Some are endowed with boxing. And I know you are very good athletes. You can run and here you are a very good hundred meter runner. <laughs> the minister have no any rule. I've just spelled out the rule for the minister and the rule of government. When it comes to national team, technical team, is the FA responsibility. The FA get their, they have their technical directorates that decide on the, who coaches our national team. It is not their ministries, it's not government responsibility. Thank you. Um, if the minister has no role or the ministry has no role in play to play in the selection of a coach for the Ghana Black Stars, like I said, you work in collaboration with GFA. Is it also not right that sometimes you offer advice or suggestions to FA in the selection of a coach? Mr. Chairman, when, like the, uh, if it is about the concerns about putting the technical team, the, the set team together, and the public have a concerns, I represent the public when it comes to sports. I will then question why, for example, after the, immediately after the exit, why we've not come here, and I, in here I intend to agree with the petitioners, that immediately after the exit, we should have been here in Ghana, reports submitted to the minister after the tournament, then based on the report and the recommendation, a search team put together. But lo and behold, the FA, without consulting me at that time, and, and because they appoint the coach, like I mentioned, I don't have any role in appointing a coach. My role has been spelled out. And they put it there. I also questioned them because of the concerns from Ghanaians. Chama, my last question. No, no, go ahead. Uh, this one, Minister. our Minister, in your own opinion, <coughs> do you think the challenge we have today in our national teams, be it under 17, 20, 23, and the Black Stars, is a coaching problem? Mr. Chairman, I will say a lot of factors. A lot of factors because I won't say it's a coach. If I have my way, we should give our coaches time. If you look at global, even Africa, if you take Senegal, the coach in Senegal is almost six years. Seven years. So the coach then will understand the players that he's having. You understand? You give the player, the coach, more time to study. You can't just, because we want resource, immediate resource, we tend to react when things don't go our way. But I believe strongly that once we give our coaches the time to know the players better and be there for long and to understand the philosophy of each player, making sure that they there will be resource. If you look at the last four years, look at the coaches that we have Change. we've changed. And if you look at even our peers in Africa, take Morocco, take uh, 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 Senegal, take Egypt, they, they, everybody is, even Cameroon now, if everybody is hailing their coaches because they had bad period, but they stood by their coaches. So that is my response. There are a lot of factors that go into it. It's not just coaching. You might have one or one coach maybe here and there you don't who don't have don't don't have the qualities that you are looking for. Maybe after you have hired him, you there, there are certain standards 
that you are looking for. But if you don't get it, then you want to change him, fine. But I believe that not all this number of coaches that we have changed will lack those qualities and standards that we have. I, I for now. You are okay for now. Okay, um, my name. So Richard, come in, and then my brother. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I would like to find out from the minister um, in his response to Honorable Kuyon's question as to whether coaches um, is involved in a way in the selection of coaches. From his, his response, he has no hands in it. Uh, I would like to find out from him in this case. In his response to his um, statement to Parliament, he described how worrisome he was as a minister. So you don't have any role to play in player selection, coach selection. So why should you be worried? That's my first question. I'm a patriotic Ghanaian. I'm carrying the entire country. And you lead a delegation, a team to represent your country. Then things don't go with the way you expect. And you should be happy. I should be the number one worried person. And that's why I said I was very worried. Because uh, my expectation, and with the caliber of the players that we have, and the, their individual performance in their various clubs, I had no doubt at all in my mind that going to Africus, the team was going to do very well. But it didn't turn out to be so. So I was worried. My question is to find out from you. Yet, yet I've put in all my effort in making sure that everything is provided. Eh? <laughs> You'll be worried. Okay. okay. My follow-up question on same is to, to ask you, do you think there's something that, as a minister, you could have done uh, um, that you, you failed to do that resulted in our abysmal performance in, in, in Cote d'Ivoire? In fact, not at all. I did everything that I could... Uh, I should have done as a minister. Thank you. My next question is, um, you've mentioned a lot of um, interventions and then policies that your government has put in place. Well, would you accept the fact that football administration and football, it's uh, the image of Ghana's football under your government has been very abysmal since 2017 up to date. Not, none of our national teams have done anything so well that we as Ghanaians would be proud of despite all the policies that you have uh, indicated the government have put in place. But I have so a last it's, question. It's rather the opposite. The most abysmal power was in 2014 when we went to Brazil. It was the global shame to our country. And it's not this government. I am saying this because since 2017, you have, um, and then uh, even as a minister, if as a minister, I, I, you've mentioned a lot of policies um, in terms of even the 116 or 160 astroturf that uh, your government, under your government, has actually sprung up around. Do you think that, one, is it the astroturf that is going to improve football in Ghana? Because even in the days when we didn't have astroturfs, we were doing well in terms of our football and our sports fraternity were doing so well. Do you think that the astroturf that you have put in place M Mr. Chairman, are the ones that are going to resolve this? We situation? all... Okay. But Mr. Chairman, we all know that once you start implementing policies, and in my presentation, I did indicate it, that we, are not, we have shifted because we identified the problem. What was the problem for our decline? And we realized that even facilities was our major problem. And we've tackled the facilities bit. We are tackling it. What's next? The next is to develop programs, competitions. And, and I mentioned that we have started the district level competitions to the regional level competitions to national level. So we have instituted what we call the national games. And policy will take time to mature. You will get dividends today. You, know, you might not be seeing the outcome of this initiative, numerous initiative and huge investment that we are putting in. But in the next five years, in the next five years, you see a lot of talent coming up. The, uh, and I can assure you that because of this numerous investment that we have done, the 10 stadiums we, have, we are putting together, the over 160 AstroTurf, that community sports facilities that we have put together, the huge investment that we have made at the University of Ghana, and making sure that we have 
world class athletics track, world class the FIFA standard football stadium. Aside that, we are we have also built the the biggest aquatic center in Africa, where the timing we have ten lane competition pool, ten lane warm up pool as we speak. In October 6th to 9th, Africa is organizing the African Championship of Swimming in Ghana. Why? Because 23 countries are going to participate in this competition. Why? Because we now have a standard world-class facility. And that's what I said when we were hosting this country, we were hosting the entire Africa here. That it was the facility that we were putting together was not only for the African Games, but beyond the Games. Recently, CAF wrote to us that because we organize a very successful African Games, they want us to host the, champ the Women's Champions League here in Ghana. CAF wrote to us. Why? Because they've seen that we have put together, Ghana was able to host the entire Africa. We had the best African Games in the history of the, top, the, the competition. And CAF wanted us to host. Aside that, we are re receiving numerous rugby. Rugby, as we speak, the World Rugby have written to us to host women rugby tournament here. Why? Because Ghana now have a rugby stadium in the entire Africa, apart from South Africa. The next country that have that standard is Ghana. It's Ghana. And the rugby, the Champions, the Champions League is coming out next month. So various sporting disciplines. Yeah. And the African Athletic Championship, the world, the African Athletic Championship have declared Ghana next year. So, on how many Next year to host. Yes, I want him to quickly, so I can do your last question. Yes, uh, my, Richard, go ahead with the last, so that I come to Honorable uh, Time before I come back to you again. Okay, so, Honorable Minister. I, I will have my last words. Uh, yes, Honorable Minister, I appreciate your responses, and um, I understand uh, um, you, are, you are a politician, so your responses are, are not things that I, I should expect. But I just want you to, and I'm very, being, being very um, frank with you, that all the issues that you've mentioned, the other sports, sporting um, interventions that you have put in place, now we are talking football. And um, even though a lot of people have pushed that we should consider other fields in the sports fraternity, the issue of football, Growing up, when we didn't have AstroTurf, you could see in every community they have a football park. Now we brought AstroTurf. Everybody is talking about AstroTurf. As a politician, wherever you go, people are talking about AstroTurf. And it is actually not coming. Um, you mentioned 160. I can tell you that they are not evenly even uh, located. Because you look at the whole of the central region, we have about 21 uh, district assemblies. And I don't think we have even up to five AstroTurf. But you have 160, which means that one area may have, or a certain area may have a lot of it. So as you're talking about policy and then it will inure some benefit in the next five years, some areas are still lacking. And football players are coming from everywhere. So you cannot, I would I only i let you that if it is possible, if you think it is the development of AstroTurf that can save us football from its current state, then you have to make sure that you extend it rapidly to, uh, to cover every area. However, I want you to also understand that the issue is not about the AstroTurfs or the fields. We need the fields. But there should be a clear policy where every community, you, you liaise with the district assemblies, that they designate areas in every community where they have football or sports facility. When you travel outside, you all see every, every community has a park. It is not the same. You go to where I live in Accra, all the way from Weja to Kaswa, you may not get up to even two parks. And I think this is something that, as a ministry, you should consider. Uh, in, if you think that the parks are the main issue, even though it's a major driver, I think that we should be able to be work closely with the district assemblies and get designated areas in every community that can promote the sports. Because somebody may not have the money to drive all the way from maybe La Paz to uh, Kanesi Sports Complex or, or Legon before he or she can train. When this happens, it means that people have talent 
and may still not be able to develop it. So I just want to bring this to your attention. Very well. Um, Honorable... Uh, okay. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, the 13th point, the, the demands, number 13, was about the coaches issue, which you have confirmed that the coaches are not paid monthly, but it's based on performance or tournament-based, they are tournament-based coaches, some of, them. some of them. I want to, because we, Mr. Chair, Honorable Chair, we want solutions and practicalities. If you look at Argentina, from 2003, 2005, 2007, they used to have one coach for their under-20 team. That coach eventually became their national team coach. The player that went through, because he had a fixed contract, the national team employed him for a fixed contract. If you look at Speed, their current national team coach, he was a development coach. So the boys that he trained, they are the ones who have transitioned. You have confirmed that our, that's not what we do here for all the national team coaches. Will you consider, like the petitioners demanded, will you consider offering these teams, offering these coaches a long-term contract so that it will cure the mischief of influence, money influence, in the selection of these coaches and in their progression? Will you consider that? Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. That's a very excellent uh, question and submission. And it's something that myself have also even proposed to the, the GFA. That, for example, you have a coach who will start under 13 or under 15. That coach should be able to graduate with the players to under 17. The same coach should be able to graduate with the players to under either 19 to under 20. Then they, they will stay together for a very long time. He knows that their philosophy, he knows individual player very well. By the time they get to the senior national team, they would have played together for a very long period. So it becomes very easy for them to play around as a team. And it's something that is laudable and I, I, if our, the managers of our football should consider, you understand. In terms of having a long-term contract. It is not the ministry, like I mentioned, that signed the contract with these coaches. We can only make a proposal to the FA or make suggestions, just like every Ghanaian, and make policies to them. But in terms of signing contract with them, like I mentioned, it's, ba it's based on terms and conditions. Once the term says that you are per it's going to be a performance base, and that performance base, you only receive this when you, you, are, you are competing. Uh, you receive this when you, are, you achieve this. When, when you achieve something, then you get uh, your, your, your remuneration. And you are set. And you work hard. And you deliver. I think the FA will also give you more opportunity to even progress as you have suggested. Minister, you just mentioned about the sports policy that you have developed. Yes. And it's at an advanced stage if you can go back to that sports policy. Because if you make budgetary provisions that we are going to pay our junior national team coaches every month as part of your policy and it make budgetary provisions, it, it will be done. Because if you leave it to the GFA alone that it is your duty. You know, my colleague asked you a question, are you concerned? Because you said, as a citizen, Minister, I beg to differ. You are head of the, 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 the sports in Ghana. No, I mean, as yes, yes, I heard that point, the patriotic Ghanaian point. Not just as a patriotic Ghanaian. Because, Minister, in 2003, we were under 17 champions. 1993, sorry. In 1991, we were champions. In 1993, we were in the finals. In 1995, we were champions. In 97, we, we came back to, I think, fourth in Malaysia, third or fourth in Malaysia. You see, that group of people eventually led us to some, the finals of the under 20 in 2002. They were the nucleus of the team that, won, that went to the first World Cup. 
By the time 2010 came, they were at their peak, and they performed very well. By 2014, they were declining. It's the reason why you state it was the worst World Cup that we have ever had. But 2018, we didn't even qualify. In 2022, we qualified. But because of what the petitioners said, we were looking for players from diaspora. Because we have gone beyond the local level and, and the juvenile level. Minister, your term as the minister have seen the worst numbers, like the people said. So I will urge you for us to go back to what the petitioners have said, that we should take notice of the local league and then the juvenile teams. Very critical point that they made. But my main question for you is that there were sponsorship money that the people mentioned. The, but the government funded our participation in the World Cup because you brought documents to Parliament to that effect that the government funded that, that participation. But there were monies that were given by... Uh, have you seen or have you demanded for accountability? Because one of the issues that they raised was also about accountability. Have you demanded for accountability of those monies? Oh, y yes, I have done. I've demanded for accountability. And what was the outcome? The, the, the because they, sorry, because you, because they mentioned specific figures too. They mentioned 10.8, 10.5 million. Those are the state, state ones. Okay. So when it comes to the price money that we get from the World Cup, the 10 point something million and all those things, we started our World Cup in 2006. And the price money that we had, the government then decided to give portion, and I don't have the figures here, it's something that we can cross check and get you the figures, portion of the money to the FA then to be used for their technical center, and that is the pram pram. And some portion, you know, like I mentioned, that the government invests in the tournament. When a major tournament like this is going, it's government that puts in the resources and everything. So at that time, government took some portion to the consolidated fund. The same thing once we went to South Africa, 2010. Government had price money, and everything was taken in 2010 to the Consolidated Fund. Then in 2014, we went for the uh, World Cup again. Again, the price money that came, also government took it from the FA. Then also in 2022, when the price money came, portion of it that we spent, government took it, and which is about five point something, government took it to finance the, our participation in AFCON and 2.8 has been given to the FA to improve on the standard and the hotels in Pram Pram. As you speak, at the last Congress of the FA, which is just about two weeks ago, the FA cut the sort to build a hotel facility for our, senior, our national teams at Pram Pram. And the ministry is monitoring crit critically to ensure that the portion that has been given to them is utilized for the purpose of which it was given to them. So to answer your question whether accountability based on our price money, during my period, this is what I've said. Because, but the, his, the historical fact is what I've given you. Then once, what I intend to agree, disagree with you, your statement that uh, uh, I'm the worst as a minister, I'm the worst uh, uh, performance in terms of numbers. I don't know which numbers you are, you are talking about. So you should be able to tell me what numbers, you, the, 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 the data you are using to determine I, during my time, it is the worst. I want to know that. But I also tend to agree with you that the, pro, the, pro, the progress, and that's why I mentioned that I even made that proposal to the FA, that once you have your junior national team, and that team progressed, the whole entire team, at least 80% of that entire team progressed to the next stage, and you get the same component, nucleus of the team progressing to the next stage, there is always going to be dividend. You are going to have a very strong senior national team, and you just chronically give the, the, our performance from the junior national team from 1991 all the way to our, the time that we went to the uh, 2010, we went to the World Cup, and it started declining. 
a new team has also been put together. This team have not played together for a very long time. This current team, they've not played the number of games. At the time that we went to South Africa, the team, that team have played together for a very long time, more than maybe 60 games together. And you saw the dividend. So that is why I said that it is something that we have proposed and we put in the policy to ensure that that progress, progression of senior national team is done. But I disagree with you. Just to uh, re-echo what I said, maybe because I, the impression is being created that maybe the, because I said AstroTef, AstroTef is going to solve our problem. No. I said we have identified the problem, we are fixing the infrastructure bit, and we have developed programs, and these programs are going to be competitions. And I even mentioned that we have shifted from sports promotion to sports development. And I went further to even explain what I meant by sports development. And that sports development is making sure that we have our juvenile uh, competition in schools. And I mentioned that there's going to be a school sports federation established. So these are things that we have put together to ensure that we improve on our outputs. But I also mentioned that policy will take time. This AstroTel that we have developed, it is going to start, a lot of people are going to start having competitions and talent are now going to be picking up. Some of them, some of the children will be as, as, as young as maybe 12, start playing, or playing on these pitches. And in the next five, 10 years, you will see that you will see the impact of putting these facilities dotted around the country. That's all I mentioned. Minister, maybe forgive my ignorance, but how come the UG, the University of Ghana, failed that we just built? It's not a FIFA standard. Why? But how come FIFA says we, 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 it's all over the We are looking for a pitch in Togo. Togo is rejecting us, and that we don't have a standard FIFA pitch for a national team. Thank you. The, currently, as we speak, we have four, like I mentioned, we have four of our clubs already using it. Four clubs are using it. Why? Because we are rehabilitating the Accra Sports Stadium and also Keiko Sports Stadium. They have closed them down and we are re rehabilitating the pitch to improve the pitch to the standard that is required because of the, of the heavy use that we have used our pitches. Not that we don't have a FIFA standard. We have FIFA standard pitches in Ghana. We have one in Accra, two in Accra, that's here uh, Accra Sports Stadium and Legon Sports Stadium. We have Baba Yara Sports Stadium, FIFA standard. We have FIFA standard Cape Coast. We are renovating a Sipon Sports Stadium. Currently, because of the sea, the closeness of the sea to the stadium, the metal got damaged, rust, and they have to blast all those metals, take the roof off. Now they are re-roofing. They've done all those works and they are re-roofing. Very soon, it's also going to be completed. So it is not true that we don't have FIFA standard stadium uh, facilities in Ghana. It's not. Blasters play there and they are qualified matches. Can they play at the Kra UG Park? It is up to the CAF inspectors to come and, and, and decide. We are written to them and they are here to respond. Okay, so just a follow up to what you have just said, because I just saw something on the social media. How true that is that they have selected uh, Cote d'Ivoire for the team to go and play. How true is that? I don't have any information yet. Like I said, we have written once Kumasi was used for that social event that did damage the pitch, and we had issue with Kumasi. We wrote to CAF that they should consider a cross sports stadium and Cape Coast, and we we are waiting to get response. Thank you. You were saying, you've been saying 160 astrotefs, 160 astrotefs, and then I got the list you presented to Parliament, and I saw through the list, and I saw that my astrotef in uh, Fievier, uh, in Sogokope, that is uh, uh, Wafa Park, that we built privately through with the help of Red Bull in somewhere in 2007, as part of the list that you are calling 160. So let me ask, are you saying that you built that one too? Thank you so, so much, Mr. Chairman. What I mentioned is that the policy of making sure that we have these sports facilities, whether private or government or anything, 
the most important thing is that before His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufuor, we have only three, whether private or government, as we speak, in Ghana, by the facilitation of government. We have gotten private people, we have gotten government agencies, we have gotten the central government put up 100 and more than 166. And there are more or still ongoing, ongoing. So the good news is that once these are completed, like I mentioned, we will, a lot of young people will have these facilities and be able to use and train so that we can develop, develop more talent when it comes to football. Are you, are you aware that the decision by a lot of the private entities to put up these sporting facilities in their communities were taking long before your coming into office? I'm not aware. On this occasion, I want to help you by saying that you reveal your statements. There are a number of them that have been built. It doesn't also stop the fact that oh, government me, is let, working oh, with oh, the me, private sector let me, let me. to develop them. So let, let, let I know me, where let you are landing. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue is this. The issue of government facilitating should it be a comprehensive one. It shouldn't. In the sense that a lot of the privately built astroturfs had been done long before what you guys did. Now, Honorable Minister, these astroturfs, I don't know whether you are aware that a lot of them have been declared more or less a death, uh, 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 like you are sentencing somebody to finish his career in a few years when the person is playing on that. Are you aware? There's a whole report on that, and I, will, I don't mind to show it to you. I'm not aware. You should, I will need you to get a report. Mm. Now, some of the base, just to give you some clarity, some of the bases of these actual terms that have been built are such that it's with five years or more of training on that same page, that fellow would have ligament issue. And that person will be thrown out of the very profession they want to what, develop on those particular pages. So one, they are not up to standard and they are not fit for purpose and are not able to even bail us as a country out of the crisis we find ourselves of getting a, a pitch on which we can play, a, a food, I mean, looking at the hooping amount of money that was spent. So just answer that. Mr. Chairman, you, you just passed the regulation, the LI, Legislative Ins Instrument for the National Sports Authority. And in that regulations, we have put in black and white that every sports facility that is going to be happen should be satisfied, should get certification and standards from the National Sports Authority. And you know the National Sports Authority have this capacity to be able to do so. So your fears are laid, apart from, uh, taken care of. Apart from that, these facilities that have been put together, most of them have their lifespan. And the way also we maintain them is also another challenge. And those challenges have been identified. We have asked the National Sports Authority to engage all these managers of this uh, astrotech to ensure that the maintenance, they maintain them well so that they can serve the purpose for which they were put, to, put up. Um, uh, yeah, definitely, I'm aware, with the help of the committee, we were able to put together, your ministry was able to put together the LI, which got matured some few months ago, going forward, going forward. Now, can you give me an answer to this simple question? Because a lot of people are asking this. What thoughts went into the initial idea to camp our stars in South Africa pre the Mr. Chairman, that question should be given to the FA. What I know is that the ministry insisted that we should camp in Ghana because we are going to have our the game in, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. And the FA agreed with the ministry, and we did camp in Ghana.
So for some time now, is there any plan by the ministry to ensure that you have facilities for camping of our stars any time they are preparing for a tournament? We don't necessarily go in out. I'm aware of a few, in fact, a wonderful work being done by the FE with the help of, uh, no, well, okay, so, no, 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 I am aware, please, if you are here, no, I am aware the role of government is key in this matter, right, the role of government is key in this matter. I'm aware FIFA is also trying, in fact, supporting the GFA to do a few things. So you would then have to let me know, or let the committee know, maybe the breakdown of the resources you have channeled into that project. So we are interested in knowing how much money has gone into all of that. All right, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we will let you, we will let you know later. Mm. Next was going to be, you know, at the what, point in time. What, I, what I mentioned earlier is that when I was responding to my colleague uh, question of the revenue that have, we have received, I did mention this. So I don't know why, if you want a documentary letter that shows how much has been like, that prove us from Chief of Staff, we will make provision for it. There was a component of the price money that government have decided that the FA should use to put up facilities for camping. And like I mentioned, the short cut has been done. And very soon, we'll have these hotels, facilities, and pitches for our national teams. And as we speak, in fact, all the junior national teams are camping in Pram Pram. Very well. Now let us look at some financials of AFCOM, because a lot of people seem to be asking questions about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, when it comes to our national team, it is important for us to know that our national team is almost 100% foreign-based players. And when you call them for a duty, you need to fly them on business class to wherever you want them. And in this case, one of the major components of the expenditure was to make sure that we fly the flight cost of all our team, including the technical team, to Ghana. And the breakdown, I will give you the breakdown soon. We also have <coughs> per diem. Once they come during the, <coughs> the, 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 or they come for the campaign period, the period that they are supposed to come, you, you need to give them per diem to be able to stay and be able to buy petty things like credit to call their families because once they come, they come straight to camp. So the players are paid per diem, and these per diems are paid during uh, the pre camping period and also during the games period. Then also, we have accommodation. Accommodation. You have during the camping period, you need to get hotels that these uh, players and the tanker team are going to stay in. And these hotels are not going to take, and we know the cost of hotels in Ghana. And the cost, there is also cost associated with accommodation, both the camping period and even the, the main tournament. The main tournament, why? Because CAF give a number, a certain number that CAF will absorb. So when you go extra above that number, you need to make accommod provision for accommodation as well. So it's also a cost. That's it. Apart from this, once they come, we need to feed them. So feeding is a major component also with the, the cost that we're, we're, we're given. Then we have medicals. Medicals is also one that is uh, very critical. And also you have cost components for medicals. Then you have qualification. So what we do is that based on their qualification, for example, when they are playing for the World Cup, if they are supposed to get uh, $10,000 for winning a match to be able to qualify, what we have instituted is to make sure that they get only 50% uh, of that. Then once they qualified, 
we give them the rest of the 15. So we we'll call it qualification bonus. So there's a so qualification bonus that we we'll normally will pay. Then also, once they came here, you know we did a campaign here. We needed to also play a friendly match because one of the reasons why normally you see countries, uh, our countries going to camp outside is to get a neighboring team, a very good team to also do a country to be able to play so that you'll be able to, to pre prepare yourself for the distance. And in this case, we're able to play a team here in Ghana. And because we play them here, we have to pay for their flights from their base here because they, luckily for us, they camp they camped in Ghana as well. So normally, you should have even flew them from their country if it is you at, at your call. But in this case, they came to camp here. So we have to fly them from here to Kumasi and fly them back and also accommodate them because it, it, it has our call. So also, it's also part of the uh, expenditure. Then our team, once they are here and they are going to uh, Cote d'Ivoire, you have to charter a flight. And their flight comes at a cost. Apart from you flying all of them business class, and when they are going to go business class, you also have to charter a flight here and take them to their, their base. And when they finish, you get a flight to bring them back. So those are the cost components. Before you go on, yes, at that point, um, what's the role of CAF? Is CAF not providing means to get to? To the best of my knowledge, CAF don't provide the state that provided. No, for the team. I'm talking yeah, about the, the team. team. The team, I mean the team. The team to yes. uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Yes. Is the, from it's the country to, the, uh, to, to yeah, Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's borne by the country, it's not CAF. CAF, not CAF. Oh, these are actuals. Yes, I will table it. I will table it to the committee. Oh, you played, normally you play, several, for example, as you speak, we are playing our qualification bonus, our qualification, uh, uh, qualification matches for the tournament in Morocco. So the qualified series. series. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh -huh, so what you call it? It's qualification from stage. No, 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 no. 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 Qualify, yes, no, we qualify for the tournament. Okay. So, for example, when we're going to Qatar, we, play, we played series of matches, sometimes eight yeah. matches, matches. Ideally, you should be paying them ten thousand dollars for every win, winning bonus. A winning bonus. But we said no. We are not going to be able to be paying you that ten thousand. You may pay ten thousand ten thousand dollars per for about three matches, and they will go. They don't qualify. The state loses. You don't get opportunity to go. So we will hold on some, so that when you qualify, we'll give you some. When you qualify, we'll give you the rest. So we call it qualification bonus for the tournament. So, Mr. Chairman, that is that is that is it. These are the components, and I will give you a copy. Very well. So you will be giving us uh, details about that for us to peruse. But we are a football nation we, in our own right, yeah. in, in terms of what we have uh, achieved over the years. And the one basic, very basic, very basic, I call it, is approval for a pitch on which we can play a Category 3 match. And why we are suffering from this, I don't know. And it's, and it's, so, it's so amazing. Uh, as we speak now, CAF hasn't approved any pitch in Ghana yet. Is that correct? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you know, prior to our playoff with Nigeria, we had an issue before the COVID. Teams, national teams were to present uh, the addressing room, the dressing room component for each stadium was 16 for cab the cabinet that you put in. So the demarcation and everything was for 16 members and sometimes maybe 20. But after COVID, things have changed. So the requirements for facilities have also changed. So once we had opportunity of playing the, uh, the, uh, the playoff with Nigeria, the government took a decision to make sure that we position Kumasi in making sure that they meet all the requirements, whether it is the changing room, whether it is the scoreboard, whether it is the uh, reserve bench, whether it is the pitch, and everything. 
So we put in all this investment to ensure that even we have to uh, reconfigure the changing room to increase the numbers because the numbers of team now that you can present for any major tournament have increased from the usual 18 to 25, sometimes 26. And each of them, when they come, they should have a place to hang their things in the, in the, in the, in the changing rooms. So major facilities have, have to be reconfigured. Luckily for us, we were able to do so in Kumasi to make sure that we make room for, so that we then station for all categories of matches FIFA approved. Then we played our various matches from them. From then we played all our competitions, qualifications, uh, matches there. Until recently when the NSA decided to give out the stadium to, uh, for a church program. And this church program lasted for almost one week without records to the ministry. Then the church program destroyed the pitch. We demanded for, immediately we got the, I got the wind as a sector minister. I demanded, I asked the NSA why that decision. And I demanded, they said, okay, they have a recovery plan. A recovery plan. So I demanded for the recovery, the recovery plan. And the recovery plan when they submitted was to make sure that they recover the pitch so that we'll be able to, because I knew that we'll have impending matches. So the recovery plan was for us to be able to play our games against uh, Angola and also other matches that are coming up. But when the Angola match came and the pitch had the calf then came to do, they did the assessment and gave us approval to be used. But after the match, there were a lot of reports that the pitch wasn't good and calf was concerned and lifted the approval that we had based on the pitch, not the other facilities, but based on the pitch. But we also knew that we have our pitches here, which is currently under rehabilitation. Accra and Cape Coast, because we're also making sure that they also meet the same standard. So we have started working on them. Both currently Cape Coast have all the facilities, the pitch has been rehabilitated and is, is ready. But normally when you finish these things, CAF have to send their inspectors to come and certify all that. For example, my colleague mentioned, asked why is it that we, 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 we built Ligon, which is an international standard, I said international standard, yet it's not approved. When you finish such a thing, you need to make sure that they come to certify it and put it in their database as one of the certified facilities. You understand? These rehabilitations have been done both in Accra and Cape Coast and even Legon. But CAF is here to certify them. So it's a certification that we are having issue with. And CAF have indicated that they will come to do and do the inspection and give those certifications. These rehabilitations, is it true that from 2021 to now, we have used 85 million Ghana cities in these rehabilitations? 2021, 22, 23. Is it true? That, it's not true. That, 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 then let me couch it this way because it's going, it was going to be my, my next it, question. It's not, it's not true. Uh, my question would be that, my question would be that, I mean, after we have spent as a nation uh, an amount of 85 million thereabouts uh, for the rehabilitation of these facilities, uh, looking at the time and today, we are looking at just a period of about five, six years. And if so, if really good work was done, some of which included our pitches had to be re renovated, are we saying that today those pitches are not available to take care of the situation. So Mr. Chairman, the renovation works started in 2018. There was an audit of all our national stadia by the AESL. AESL did an audit in 2014. 
and in 2014 raised an alarm of a danger alumi. Let me come. Please, you ask your question. Let me answer. Let me answer. A danger alumin. Why? Because that transport stadium was becoming a death trap and needed immediate attention. And this is a record at the AESL, which is a government satisfied engineering firm, consulting firm. Nothing was done. Nothing was done till this stadium, stadium deteriorated further until 2018. Then in 2018, when Ghana had the opportunity to host the women AFCON, the then minister then decided to seek approval from the chief of staff to make sure that we revamp our national stadia. These stadia, as we like I mentioned, are made by metals, heavy metals. And because of the locations to the sea, all the seas, the metals were rotten, rust. And it was very difficult, even at the VVIP, if you read the report very well, and I will make copies of the report to the committee. Then, Isn't what you sent out? If you have seen it already, then you shouldn't ask but, me a question but because I will, I will be asking uh, you questions. Yeah. You so, so the, then I'll the, be asking questions. Yes. Then the renovations were done in phases. Why? Because we didn't have we didn't have the needed funding to be able to carry out a comprehensive study as advised or prescribed by AESL because of the funding challenges. It needed to be done phases. Then. It was done, and we used it to host the women Afcon, the various stadiums, and that is Cape Coast and Accra. After that, the second phase and the third phase were done, even before 2021. Even before 2021, and since 2021, there have never been any the, any renovation in in, a, in, a, in Accra. Then, the second phase of Kumasi started in 2023. If my memory serves me right, I have to cross check. But the first phase for Esipon have also started long before. You understand? And after that, we have renovated this st stadia. And we have used it for women AFCON. We have used it them for the African Games. And you know, number of countries that came and used these uh, uh, pitches. When pitches are used heavily and league matches, they need constant rehabilitation. They need constant maintenance. And that is why immediately after the African Games, the ministry took the decision to make sure that these two stadia are put under, especially the pitches are put under rehabilitation, which I said currently they are, they are ready. So to answer your question, it is not just we have renovated them, we have not used uh, within short time and they are not ready. The renovation, if we have done that in 2014, if we have done that in 2014, maybe it would have reduced the costs that we have put in now, of which you have mentioned. Thank you. Uh, did, before I even come to that period where I'm aware <coughs> the procurement process to get a contractor to do some work had started. But then, oh, yeah, so, but then that is not the issue. The issue is that, hello, hello, Procurement took you five years to be able to do till 2018. No, no, but I, you don't, I don't think that, don't, don't digress. Let's come back to the issue. You have spent $85 million. Ghana procurement started I mean, in 2014. No. I'm asking 2014. Procurement started to 2020, 2018. And we couldn't stop and make sure that we saved the national stadia when there was a report that was indicating an alarming stage. 